Good morning. And uh, uh, it's my great honor to be uh, in your company today. Uh, and much that Mr. Legrasse has uh, pitched this as a young business leader, I'm here not so much to talk about business today, uh, but more on young people generally and what uh, or how the uh, Hong Kong government uh, interacts with them, uh, among other topics. And uh, in the q and I'm more than happy to answer uh, all sorts of questions, whether it's about uh, me or the uh, commission, which I'll introduce, or uh, young people in Hong Kong generally, or, or family business, I'm more than happy. But my, my presentation, uh, my short 15 minutes here will focus on uh, the commission youth and our work. So, um, uh, now the audience uh, down here are uh, from all over the world. Uh, I see a lot of faces uh, from Japan, from the Philippines, from uh, Western Europe, from uh, Russia. Um, and I, I bet you we all uh, experience or observe uh, similar issues with uh, uh, young people uh, back in your home country as we do here in Hong Kong. Uh, and that, that is namely, um, uh, and, uh, our young people face an increasingly uh, global uh, and competitive uh, environment. Uh, it's not just a matter of uh, uh, young people competing with each other within their home market for, for jobs or for business opportunities or for education opportunities. Uh, in our uh, ever increasingly globalized world, um, it is uh, uh, Hong Kong young people competing with uh, Chinese ones who in turn compete with uh, Russian or American ones. So I, I think we all draw on similar uh, experiences. The other um, uh, attribute that I think Hong Kong young people face is uh, the socioeconomic environment in Hong Kong uh, is increasingly becoming more challenging for, uh, for young people in Hong Kong. That, I think, is a very global phenomenon, especially uh, with rich industrialized countries. Uh, I think consistently in Western Europe and North America, uh, even in Japan, even in a lot of other developing countries, you see um, uh, economic mobility among young people uh, being, uh, uh, being hindered, uh, wage growth or career prospects uh, slowing down. So the, the, the issues, the challenges young people face in Hong Kong are not unique uh, among uh, 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 Hong Kong people. I, I think it's a global phenomenon, but that is not an excuse to just say it's a global phenomenon and therefore there's not much we can do about it. I think th there is a lot we can do, uh, which I'll explain um, uh, how the government uh, uh, and the Commission Youth, of which I'm chair, uh, is, is doing. The Commission Youth's work, um, if you look at our website, our mandate, or our uh, terms of reference, uh, among other things, is to advise the chief executive on matters pertaining to youth or young people. Um, our job, our, our, our body is a uh, consultative body. Uh, we're not an executive body or an executive agency uh, in, in that uh, our first and foremost task is to uh, collect, to gather uh, information and opinion through engagement, through outreach, and uh, to, to analyze them and to transmit them back to the chief executive and his government. Th that is what we do. Uh, we are not a, um, a, uh, a social work agency. Uh, we, we do fund a lot of programs. We do fund a lot of research. So we have a funding role, um, but we certainly are not an executive arm. Um, and uh, apart from advising the government itself, I think it's important uh, we understand to understand that uh, we advise or we try to uh, reflect uh, youth opinion uh, or youth needs uh, to other advisory bodies and, and also to society at large. I think uh, young people are often a misunderstood category. Uh, not just young people in Hong Kong, but young people uh, in other parts of the world uh, often get misunderstood by uh, non-young people. I don't want to say older people. 
uh, but uh, non-young people, uh, uh, and I, I see uh, quite a few non-young people in this room today as well. Uh, so so I, I want to emphasize whether it's Hong Kong youth or youth back in your country, um, uh, they, are, they often feel misunderstood. And I, I think part of the commission's work is to let them be understood. Uh, we also have uh, a uh, quasi-international function, which I'll explain in a minute, but we do have programs, we do have liaison with uh, other uh, youth-related bodies uh, around the world. Uh, we are a uh, consultative, uh, non-statutory body, and we, we uh, including myself, we have 31 uh, lay members, uh, plus uh, a secretariat of around 10 or 15 uh, uh, officials, uh, civil servants, uh, who, to support our work. And actually, uh, just for the record, uh, Kenneth here uh, is one of our members as well. Uh, we have several uh, subcommittees or working groups, and you can, you can broadly see from uh, these subcommittees or working groups where our focus lies. Our focus lies on international exchanges, uh, exchanges and internships with uh, uh, the mainland. Uh, Youth Program Coordinating Committee, that is uh, very much focused on uh, very localized youth programs, uh, uh, summer basketball programs, uh, uh, youth uh, leadership development. That, that is done through uh, this third uh, committee. Uh, youth Studies and Development Policy, that is our research arm. We produce uh, research from time to time uh, uh, on, on youth topics. And uh, the, new, uh, the fifth one is a new one. Uh, it's called the Youth Development Fund, which uh, I understand we are uh, securing funding approval from uh, LegCo, which is our parliament in Hong Kong uh, this week. Uh, but um, uh, th the government has asked the Commission Youth to administer uh, a large, uh, a large-scale startup fund that encourages uh, entrepreneurship among young people. So th that is the that was the official uh, introduction on uh, the Commission Youth, and all that was extracted from uh, our official website. Uh, this is um, my personal vision as chairman of the Commission Youth, and, and that is uh, I want. Uh, not just myself or the commission, uh, but uh, government and society at large, really to, to connect young people, uh, opportunities and resources, uh, so they can realize their fullest potential. I think, uh, I think you know, this, this statement here really is uh, universally applicable. Uh, who doesn't want their home country's young people to realize their fullest potential? And, and, and be ha happy, resilient, and healthy. I think uh, these are universally agreeable, um, universally agreeable uh, and, and worthy aspirations. As se several areas of focus. Um, you know, y young people, no matter how you define, uh, define uh, the age range, uh, they will spend a lot, if not most, of their time within this age range uh, in education and in jobs. And I really think if you set them, if you set your young people properly uh, during their education phase of life, and also during their early uh, job phase of life, then they're off to a good start in life. And I, I think right now a lot of uh, the problems uh, Hong Kong's young people face, uh, and probably uh, those of other uh, countries as well, is uh, uh, the education and job ladder uh, isn't optimal. We also want to connect uh, young people with uh, opportunities. And it's not just education and job opportunities. I think uh, with the mass proliferation of uh, tertiary education uh, around the world these days, um, uh, opportunities in the form of experiences, and not just work experience, becomes uh, more important. And, and voices, I want uh, young people's voices to be heard, uh, whatever their opinion on whatever matter. I think it's important that this gets reflected back to government and society at large. Uh, 
Hong Kong's young people, like uh, many countries, are, uh, are very diverse. Uh, it's impossible to uh, stereotype, or you, one shouldn't stereotype and overgeneralize uh, young people. And uh, what, what, I, what I tend to say is this. Um, the top 10% and the bottom 10% of young people, no matter how you define that, uh, generally uh, are, are being taken care of. It's the middle 80% of young people that I think uh, is underserved. And I think uh, a lot of our commission's work want to focus on the middle 80. Our actions, uh, very quickly, I, I know I'm running out of time. Engagement, we engage them uh, as much as we can. Uh, since I took up this uh, supposedly part-time job back in April, uh, I have uh, uh, conducted over 130 engagement activities, and I've got 20 odd ones to go before the end of the year. Um, so we want to reach out to them uh, and simply listen to them. Exposure experience, we want to provide opportunities, whether it's leadership development, whether it's uh, uh, football classes, whether it's uh, exchanges to Poland, Russia, Ireland, Singapore, Japan, just to uh, list a few countries uh, that we've been to this year, uh, whether it's um, uh, other sort of experience we want to provide, uh, that's how young people grow, that's how young people gain new perspectives in lives, in, in their lives. Uh, research, like I say, we have a research arm, we want to uh, research and study and analyze uh, different topics. And importantly, produce actionable research uh, for the government to consider. Uh, dialogue, uh, like I say, this, continue, this goes back to the uh, engagement theme. Uh, dialogue, not just between me and young people, uh, but uh, young people and young people, uh, young people and non-young people, uh, uh, that, I think, is sorely missing in Hong Kong, and, and perhaps I see a lot of nods uh, across the floor. Maybe uh, dialogue between uh, young people and non-young people are also lacking in, in your home country as well. Uh, this is, I'm just doing a little bit personal advertisement. Um, uh, I try to uh, propagate, I try to uh, advocate uh, various youth-related issues, such as social mobility, the needs of ethnic minorities, uh, parent-children communications, uh, political participation, interactive exchange. These things are uh, things that we talk about in uh, the commission, but I think beyond the commission's quarterly meetings and uh, bi-monthly uh, bi uh, subcommittee meetings, it's important that we take our work beyond the official meetings, official uh, dialogues. So I think it's important that um, I do my fair share of advocacy out there. Some very quick photos, which I know we don't have time to look at. And I'm done. Thank you.